There is a renaissance now in the public interest in the life and times of John Brown, the Dred Civil War abolitionist. How do you view his role? What he played in as an abolitionist, that he wanted to help the Negroes to freedom. So was it... Uh... That was not exactly what he was trying to do. What he was trying to do was liberate a country, not, uh, not, simply, not simply the black people in that country. People think of it as extreme because... Uh, all he was really saying was a man of thing. What is your that when he went to Harper's Ferry, he knew what he is doing? Well, he, he might not get out. <laughs> when you take over government property, government property, with a handful of men, you know, yeah. all of you know they may die in the morning, you know exactly what you're doing and you're not being romantic at all. It was a self-sacrifice? No. Me? Whatever I believe in love, I have to do whatever I have to do to, to, to do it, to make it real. That's what a belief is all about, isn't it? He believed that men should not be bought and sold. He also believed, and he was perfectly right, that no nation that did that could survive. As he himself says, the day he was hung, or the day before he was hung, I now believe, as I paraphrase, that the crimes of this guilty land will never be abolished, will never be wiped out by, by, by blood. I thought it could be done, he says, with a very little bloodshed. But he was wrong right then. He was right then and he's right now. I think he was a great American prophet. And he was one of the great, one of the really great Americans, one of the really great people from Zelda Hood of any country. Now, what about his role as a uh, leader of the uh, Underground Railway? Now, was it again a practical thing? Was the Underground Railway practical? Yes. We so, got, got a lot of people got a lot of people in Canada, you know, a lot of it. Mm. Well, it's practical. We're talking about human freedom. Now, does John Brown and those other white people who acted like him to help the black to gain freedom change, in your view, the collective good, but all whites must bear in a way for the suffering of the blacks? No, the collective guilt that all whites must bear in a way is not for the suffering of the blacks. It's just something they brought upon themselves. No, but not everybody. Every Arab white can... man has to pay for his history. I've got to pay for mine. And it's not what you've done to me which menaces you. It's what you've done to you that menaces you. Uh, do people feel this way? Or uh, I don't know you what are trying feel. to open up the... Because people don't feel uh, that way. You know, if you talk to uh, 95 or 99 from 100 Americans, they don't feel guilty what happened before or even what is going on now in the heartland. They will feel guilty after wounded knees over. They will feel worried after Alcatraz is settled. People pay for what they do. What they do is what they do to themselves. So, when I ask you that the history of life, I mean it, that it was full of suffering. And so one can have the feeling that it is all negative, that they don't want to think about it, they want to forget it. it, it Who wants to forget it? It is what I'm asking. It's a very hard question to answer because I see what you mean. And uh, I wonder if I could say yes. You know, everyone wants that. Nobody wants to suffer. Mm. And everything you can to forget it. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, you can't because the situation of being a black American is not, it's not past or present. Mm-hmm. And if you want to forget it, you, you can't forget it. You know, it's, uh, it's some, some cop will certainly remind you. Mm-hmm. Some landlord will remind mm-hmm. you. A bank will remind you. you know, your kid will remind you. You know, mm-hmm. it's not a question of forgetting. You can't forget. Most Americans. I have not enjoyed history at all, because in fact the whole achievement of being an American is, is the attempt to destroy history. You know, there's no point in talking about history to Richard Nixon, for example. Not the less to his wife or his daughter, no. It is not a concept. No, how they don't know what a wounded knee is about, for example. They don't know how that happened. They don't know what it means to represent people who have never honored a single treaty with the Indians. And what that means, that's history, you know. It's, it's history, it, it's not history for the Indians. What Americans think about history is something they think they can forget. Mm-hmm. They don't know that they had to pay for their history. Because the Indians are paid for it every inch and every hour. That's why they were wounded me. That's why they took over Alcatraz. That's mm-hmm. how you got Cassius Clay. That's how you got Malcolm X. So they betrayed everybody, from the Indian to you. But many people feel disputed because, you know, they look at it, that, uh, for example, uh, America came twice to the rescue of Europe. I will be today... I'm sorry, you're talking to me. It didn't come to my rescue. That's all I know about it. 
what you have a good chance to find and you either. I'm not this way, but what America gives you is good. Try everybody a fighting chance. <laughs> Didn't give it to me. It gives you. You are a famous man. You are. I, have, a, I don't know about. Uh, do not, I do not owe that to any American you ever heard of, except possibly John Brown. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to argue with you. <laughs> but no, it, it gave you. It gave oh, you because... It. No, but it, it gave... did not give me... You know what it gave me? It gave me my father and my mother and his father and his mother. It gave me my ancestry. That is to say, it gave me the auction block. And it gave me... Since I had to survive that, my grandmother and my grandfather and my father and my mother knew I had to survive it, it gave me that. So it did not intend to give me that. It gave me an enormous, mm. enormous sorrow, which I had to learn to live with from the moment I was born. That can be a tremendous gift. The only gift in America is given to any black person, to say the very least. How would you define the existing relationship between whites and black in America today? What is it? What kind of relationship? Ask is it? John Brown. No, he is not here. I cannot mm -hmm. ask him, but mm -hmm. I can ask him. Mm -hmm. uh, I repeat. It is the same? It didn't change anything, you see? What has changed? You're still in jail. Um, but for, uh, uh, not for the same reason. I don't, uh, it's somehow... Uh, so it's still commerce. Cool. It is still cheap labor. Mm -hmm. It is still a way of controlling a person so that he will do what you want him to do so you can make profit on him. That's what it is. If you had a Belafonte or me, or, you know, some kid in, in Bedford-Stuyvesant, the, 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 the principle has not changed. No. Don't ask John Brown, that's President Nixon. So there, uh, there is no, you don't see really any progress? The progress I see is not to be discussed in an interview, because if I told you what I think of as progress, but, you would be in trouble. So I don't believe in the word. But I have a conscience, let's put it as a conscience. Now, I would like to see changes. So what is the practical way? You it's started a discussion about John Brown, who talked to Boston through the federal government in an attempt to liberate not merely black slaves, but a whole country mm -hmm. from a disastrous way of life. However horrible it may sound, it was a kind of act of love. Mm -hmm. You know, it failed. <laughs> and aside from such acts always do fail. And what's left is what the impact made on the conscience of a few people, which travels down in time. No, so it wasn't futile. But until today, the institutions, which is where slavery is acted out, mm -hmm. have not changed. Until the institutions are changed, there's no point in talking about progress. But how to change the institution? I am a writer. Yeah. It's a very special case. And my questions are how to work on people's hearts and work on their minds so they begin to love each other, which is the only, you know, that's a very common thing to say, but the only possible way to hope to get anything done is that you take me as serious as you take you. And to realize that your child and my child are going to pay a certain bill if we don't teach our children to love each other. You know? Now, it's important to be reminded that it's going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. It hasn't happened. No, it's never. It's virtually never happened in history. Mm -hmm. some, people, some people have always believed it and acted on it. Some people never have because it's hard to do. You've got to risk everything to do that.